I think it goes without saying that Nebraskans have the faculty to plan their destiny and then make the plan work. This in itself is a unique characteristic not often found in other parts of the country. This morning on a program that called When Did You Last Read a Good Book? Well, writers, as you can see, we have our special guest back. The time right now is nine minutes. Nine minutes past seven. Let's take a stand over there, huh? After half a century of dominance in the market, it may be difficult to recognize how unique the 1011 market was in the early days of television. It seems so unlikely that a broadcaster based in Michigan, an engineer, could have an impact on Nebraska that resonates today. For those who know John Fetzer, it's really no surprise. Back in 1917, and still a teenager in Indiana, he experimented with radio broadcasts out of his home. When in college, he built the campus radio station and later, during the Great Depression, relocated WKZO to its permanent home in Kalamazoo, Michigan. It was a real rough and tumble time for us. Of course, it was, there was a bank holiday and everybody lost all of his money. So we lived for three or four years on trade deals of service and IOUs back and forth. John Fetzer's first contact with Nebraska was in court. Fetzer wanted his Michigan station to broadcast 24 hours a day with a signal reaching much of the Midwest. WOW Radio in Omaha shared the 590 AM frequency. The owners claimed the Michigan station would interfere with their signal. After seven years in the courts, including two trips to the U.S. Supreme Court, Fetzer won the right to boost his signal. And as a result of that, the FCC was able to license 3,000 new radio stations. Back when television was still new, Fetzer realized some of the largest, wide-open stretches of America received no TV signal at all. The Michigan broadcaster saw opportunity on the Great Plains. So as he looked at Lincoln, Nebraska, and Lincoln looked pretty good. State Capitol, the university, a football team, no competition. Omaha is putting out a signal that's quite weak in Lincoln, and there aren't that many sets available anyway. By 1954, Lincoln radio station KFOR brought television to town. The object? to change sight and sound waves into the electronic impulses which make television possible. John Fetzer created a second Lincoln station, KOLN TV. The great Lincoln Land plan was developed. Then, and as a in a move today, that symbolized Fetzer's commitment to both business and public service, he gave away that second broadcast license to the University of Nebraska. The university here had no television equipment, had no television studio, had no transmitter, had no antenna. He gave all the equipment and all the, and the frequency and everything, and the FCC, of course, jumped at the opportunity because they could see where they could get educational television started. There hadn't been any up until then, and especially not in Lincoln, Nebraska. I think we all know and understand that something wonderful happened when, when that station was spun off and given to the University of Nebraska because you and Nebraska have probably one of the finest educational television systems anywhere in the country. It became the state's first educational TV station and only the ninth such station in the United States. Today, it's the flagship station for the state's public television network, NET Television. But Fetzer's Lincoln Station established its own chapter in the history of broadcasting. He saw Channel 10 as a unique opportunity to serve a wide open marketplace. He did it with the man he picked to run the place, another broadcast engineer named James Evil. Here at Channel 10, we have a staff of 18 engineers who work day and night to maintain our transmitting equipment at the peak of technical perfection. They look at this market and say, boy, okay, what can we do? They put a tower at Beaver Crossing, a 1,000 foot tower, to uh, transmit the signals, you know, as far west as possibly could go. KOLN TV just built a brand new tower out west of town. If you tell me within 50 feet how high that tower is, I'll give you the prize. In the mid-50s, that's unusual. This allowed Channel 10 to have an incredible coverage area. And at 1,000 watts in the air, you're going to be able to cover a good portion of the eastern and central part of the state of Nebraska. Well, I'll tell you, it's 1,000 feet. That's how high it is. You said nine KOLN was able to acquire a, a 
station in Grand Island and essentially then cover a good portion of the state. Um, the old 1011 strong model is just an incredible idea in terms of serving a very rural part of the state. Which was good for the city of Grand Island in the central Nebraska area and good for, for Channel 10 in Lincoln also. So that it became uh, virtually a, a statewide television operation. Meanwhile, the State Board of Education says it'll meet in Lincoln next Tuesday. KOLN used to have in their news an 85 share of the audience. That means for all of the sets that are tuned into television, 85% of the viewers were watching 1011 News. There's more to reporting the news than meets the eye, and channels 10 and 11 do it best. There was a great concern on the part of Mr. Ebel and through Fetzer for getting information out to rural Nebraska. He may have been a shrewd businessman, but John Fetzer also set a standard for respect and values in the workplace. John Fetzer believed in one philosophy in every operation he had. He wanted the operation to be a family affair. He was very insistent that everybody within the station know everybody else. For instance, at a Christmas party, he would insist that the engineering department not sit with all the other engineering department. He would insist that they sat at tables where they would have to know somebody in a, some other department. That's how much he believed in a family situation. He also made history in sports. Fetzer's broadcast properties became a perfect match for baseball. He bought the Detroit Tigers and led the team to a World Series championship in 1968. John Fetzer did more than establish a dominant and profitable broadcast business. Mr. Fetzer created a model for serving rural America with television at a time when it was considered a big city phenomenon. He was very, very concerned about public service, public affairs, reaching the agricultural and the rural community. A lot of the things that happened with John Fetzer were uh, pioneering in the business, so to speak. In recognition of a true broadcast pioneer whose vision and generosity shaped the television landscape in Nebraska, we are pleased to add the name of John Fetzer to the Nebraska Broadcasters Association Hall of Fame. Permit me to extend my heartfelt appreciation for your unstinting support. Thank you very much.